Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome to my first video on Pokemon Sword. When I first played Generation 8, and actually the only time I played Generation 8, I really didn't think the game was that amazing. I mean, they took out my favorite boy, so of course I'm not going to be happy about that. But I do know that they brought a lot of Pokemon back in the form of DLC, but I never got that and I'm not planning on getting it anytime in the future either. But I did want to play the game again and give it kind of a second chance. So there is only one more thing we need to pick and if you've read the title you can see that we're going to be playing this game with only the Wonder Trade feature. While normally in Pokemon games you know which encounter you're going to get and well Wonder Trade basically takes this away by giving you Pokemon that other people don't need anymore and just throw away as junk. But for us, this junk is going to be very useful. Sometimes you might get the worst Pokemon possible, but there are some lunatics out there that give away shinies and even legendary Pokemon. So let's see which second-hand Pokemon we're going to be using on our journey, but first, let's jump into the rules of the video. First off, this will be a hardcore Nuzlocke, so if a Pokemon dies, it will be dead and all of the other hardcore Nuzlocke rules will be applied. That means that I can also capture one Pokemon per route and trade it away for something. Dupes Claws will also be implemented, so if I get a Pokemon that I already got, I can trade it away for something new. Besides this, I'm also going to allow myself to get 9 encounters in the wild area, one before the first gym and then one after every gym badge I get. And that's all because the premise of this video is wonder trading and we are going to want to do that as much as possible. Before we get into the journey, don't forget to smash like and subscribe because that helps me out a lot and let's just jump right into it. The journey starts off with me sitting on a couch. I think Nintendo took my life a little too seriously since that's what I do all day. Our friendly rival Hop then walks in with his Wooloo. I don't know why sheep are in the house, but apparently that's a thing in Galar. After then embarking on our journey with Hop, we find out that the champion's in town. Of course, his name is Leon, we all know who Leon is. I know a lot of people hate him too, but I actually kind of like him. And since he's Hop's brother, we also get a starter Pokemon from him, and I'm deciding to go with Scorbunny because I've been watching the Journeys series, and I do have to say it has sparked some love for Scorbunny with me. After then destroying Hop's Grookey and Wooloo with Embers, we claim our first victory but the challenge hasn't started yet because wonder trading is not available yet. We then have to save a sheep because there is a big doggo that gives a lot of fog. And did we just die? Nope. So we go and say goodbye to our mother, capture our first Pokemon Rookidee which we're going to be trading away very soon. We then go to the Pokemon lab where we meet up with the best boy ever. We also get our Pokedex which we're probably not going to be able to fill out but we're going to get some decent spots in here. I then also go to a mark to get some Oran Berries because they're going to be very useful in battle. On the next route we also capture another Pokemon and finally meet this region's professor which is probably the most forgettable professor yet. The professor's house is also lovely to have Pokemon battles in so we're going to be beating Hop here again, roasting all three of his Pokemon with embers. After the battle, Leon decides to give us a letter of endorsement, which means that we can now compete in the gym challenge. Our journey almost ended after a tiny little meteorite almost landed on our head. And after picking it up, we turn it into a Dynamax band, which means that Pokemon can go big no. We now also get access to Wonder Trading, so the challenge can finally start. I trade away my Squavit and get a Zorua for my first Pokemon. He's level 1, so we're going to be able to use him. As my second Pokemon, I get a level 25 Nuzleaf, so we're not going to be using using him until we get the second gym badge. And I then finally trade away my starter to get a level 50 gold bat, so we're not going to be able to use him until the very end of the game. We then get our set of camping gear because we're going to not try to die in the wilderness out there. And we then reach the big event of this game, the wild area where I decide to capture another Pokemon, Combi, which I can trade away and in return I get a Mimikyu, also level 1, so we can use this as well. Also, the disguise ability is kinda busted, so we're going to be using this thing a lot. Eventually we reach Motostoke, where we meet up with Sonya again, and she shows us the way to where we need to get signed up, for the gym challenge, after doing so we pick a funny number and we meet up with a group of hooligans who are standing in a hotel lobby. Yeah, I really don't like Team Yell. We also meet up with Marnie, who is basically your second rival for this game, or should I say third rival. 
And after some good night's sleep, we meet up with the director of this entire thing, Chairman Rose. And is it just me or is he looking kinda sus? Since Hop won't let us go to the next round until we beat him, it's time to crush his hopes and dreams, starting by killing his Wooloo, Grookey and Rookity with Zora's extrasensories and Swifts. After winning we can capture a Gossifleur and trade that away for a Scent Discord, which is also level 50 so we can't use it until the end game. But this does mean it's time for us to get our hands dirty in the Galar Mine. Over here I capture a Timber, which I trade away for a level 1 Sobble. And while I'm not a big fan of Inteleon, Sobble is definitely cute, so it's going to be added to the team. At the end of the mine though, we get challenged by Challenger Bead. I don't really know what this guy's problem is with me, but he seems kinda like a douche. So we show him who's boss by shadow sneaking his entire team with Mimikyu. I mean, that's what you get for only using psychic types. I hope he doesn't change his specialty by the end of the game to fairy. Anyway, we can embark further on our journey, so we grab another Pokemon. Evolve our Sobble into a Drizzile, I might have just butchered that name. So we then have a date with Sonya and we look at a mountain and we go, hmm, interesting. We then do the first gym challenge by rolling around some sheep. And this was actually not a hard gym mission at all. But now that does mean that we have to fight our first gym leader, Milo. And even though we don't have any super effective moves for him yet, Zora can still take out Gossifleur with some extra sensories. And for Eldegoss, I just swapped the Mimikyu to take the first Dynamax to attack with its disguise. So I make my Pokemon go big, after a few turns his Pokemon go small and I kill with Max Phantasm. Very easy, first gym badge, Milo didn't even put up a fight. So on the next route I capture a Stuffle, which I trade away for a level 44 Pelipper, another thing I can't use. After then saving this bloke from two Team Yell members, we get ourselves the Rotom Bike, which makes us go vroom. And then before we can go to the next town, we have to beat Hop again. And this is kinda how it went, Water Pulsed Wooloo. I swapped in Mimikyu because he brought in Twacky, I took a couple of hits from Razor Leaf and did some decent damage with Shadow Sneak, but eventually I have to swap in Drizzile again because I don't want Mimikyu to die here. And since he went for a Screech and we're faster, we now kill with Water Pulse. And then we can kill the last Pokemon Corvus Squire with two more Water Pulses. And is it just me or does Chairman Rose have Drip? So I'm going back to the wild area to capture my encounter from after the gym batch and you might have seen that I've only been carrying two Pokemon for the last battle as well and that is because I don't want Zoro to over level the level cap for the next gym leader. Anyway, so I traded my Vulpix away for a Magby which is not good against the next gym either, but Magmar is definitely not a bad Pokemon so I won't complain. I also do some fishing in Hulbury to get my next encounter, a Chincha which I trade away for a Krogunk with Dry Skin, finally something useful for the next gym battle. Because Dry Skin cancels out all of the water type moves. So with our new team we went to the second gym and challenged Nessa. And so Zora can take down the first Pokemon Goldeen with extra sensories. Aracuda also goes down to extra sensories but we did get hit with two Aqua Jets. And the next Pokemon she brings out is her Gigantamaxed Big Boy Turtle Dreadnought. So I bring in Drizzile, which should be able to take any attack this thing throws at me. After tanking a Max Geyser, I bring in Mimikyu to take another hit with Disguise. And then I bring in Krogunk to take another Max Geyser with Dry Skin. I then make Toad go big, and I kill Dreadnought with two Max Knuckles. We then get our second gym badge and go and have a nice dinner with Chairman Rose at the restaurant. I mean, I love eating paper. And after this awkward conversation, we get another encounter. So I capture Shellos and also add Nuzleaf to the team. After capturing Shellos, we have another encounter with Bead before our wonder trade is actually complete. And since he still only has psychic types, we can just use Knockoff and then Shadow Sneak the rest of his Pokemon. After embarrassing Bead once again, we trade away our Shellos and get a Rookidy. And if I can keep this thing alive for long enough, we can have a nice Corviknight. So me and Hop chase away after Team Yell because they're once again stirring up trouble. And my Rookity also quickly evolves into a Corvusquire. We then meet the third gym leader, Kabu, who specializes in fire types. He's going to get destroyed. We then capture a Coughing, which I traded away for a Bulbasaur. Pretty good trade if you ask me. I catch another Rookity in the wild area because I just got another gym badge and trade this away for a Tyroke and I was thinking hmm this could be amazing if I can get a Hitmontop with Intimidate but apparently it's level 60. Yeah I doubt I'm going to use this thing. I then buy myself some Drip 
and evolve my Bulbasaur into an Ivysaur. As we then try to stay in the hotel, we get stopped by Marnie, and I can't actually use the half of the Pokemon that I've used already because otherwise they're going to exceed the level cap. Because there's no way to turn off the EXP share in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Anyway, Corvus Squire can still kill Krogunk with a single pluck. For Morpeko, I swapped in Magibee because he had Flame Body, which means that the Morpeko is now burned. So I then proceed to swap in Krogunk and kill Morpeko with Revenge. And the last Pokemon, Scraggy, once again went down to two plucks from Corvusquire. After the battle, it's time for the trial of the gym. And in this gym, I can capture a Pokemon, which means that we have another Wonder Trade. And we get a regular Meowth. Yeah, I'm not going to use you. After that, I needed some what, so I did some biking around in a Rotom Rally until I could buy the TR for Surf, which I learned to Drizzile. With the new move on our team, we can try to take on Kabu. And Kabu is once again the fire type gym leader, so we just Surf Ninetales. We also Surf Arcanine. We stall out Gigantamax sent to Scorch moves with Magby and Mimikyu before bringing in Drizzile again, Gigantamaxing and killing with Max Geyser. This gives us three gym badges, which means a big part of the wild area unlocks and we can now go to the rest of the world. And in the wild area, I captured a Machop, which I traded away for a Score Bunny. So we get our starter back. I'm really happy with this. And what do you do when you're really happy? you go and look at paintings. And we also, of course, evolve our Score Bunny into a Raboot and our Zoro into a Zoroark. And we also capture the strongest Pokemon of all time, Magikarp, which we sadly enough have to trade away for a Roly Coly, another fire type. After traveling some more, we eventually reach Stoan's side where we once again have to fight Hop. He now has the Pikachu spitting duck on his team. Luckily, I still had Drizzle on the team who could just sucker punch it twice to take it down. His Twacky actually took two of my Pokemon to take it down, one time Corvusquire with Pluck, and then I swapped in Raboot to finish it off with two more flame charges. His Silly Cobra got taken now by a couple of Plucks of Corvusquire. And his last Pokemon, Toxel, is literally trash, so a Zoroark Extra Sensory takes out Hop. Shortly after the battle, my Drizzile evolves into an Inteleon. I think I might be in the wrong game because I'm playing Beyblade, not Pokemon. And before taking on the next gym leader, I did some evolutions evolving Ivysaur into Venusaur, Raboot into Cinderace, Magby into Magmar, and finally Karkol into Colossal. And now it's just time to take on B, but B was actually the easiest gym leader so far. Since she has a Hitmontop as her first Pokemon, which literally has zero moves to touch my Mimikyu, I can just freely set up six Home Claws and take down Hitmontop with Shadow Sneaks, Pangoro with a Wood Hammer, and the last two of her Pokemon, Surfetched and the big boy Mega Mega Dynamax Machamp with Max Phantasms. This means we are now halfway done with the gym journey. We have four gym badges, four more to go. Beat is then once again up to no good, destroying cultural heritage of the region by using an elephant bulldozer. So we once again have to stop him. And this was just like every other beat battle. I just knocked off his entire team with Zoroark and got another easy win. The cops then come along and take him away to jail. My Corvusquire also evolved into a Corvin Knight. And we can now finally move on to the Mushroom Forest. Don't eat the glowing mushrooms though. As we capture another Pokemon here which we can wonder trade away for. A Shiny Temple Coco that's level 100 which is definitely not hacked in. Do not go to this website. Still pretty cool to have a Shiny Temple Coco. Even though we're never going to use it. Up in Balan Lee, we pick up the Eviolite, which is going to be amazing on Magmar since I won't be able to get a Magmartyr, so he's just going to be very bulky. Since the next gym is Fairy type, I evolve my Krogan into Toxic Rogue because he might be pretty useful against her. And the next gym battle I had to participate in was the Fairy type one against Old Woman. Opal. I decided to start off with Colossal to set up some Stilt Rocks, then I swapped in Corviknight to set up some Hone Claws on the Weezing and then proceed to kill with Steel Wing. Mawile was a little bit more bulky so he took two Steel Wings. I then answered some questions wrong so my stats got dropped. So I decided to go into Colossal to take some hits from the Togekiss, then go back into Corviknight, Dynamax and kill Togekiss with a Max Steel Spike. Actually, it took two Max Steel Spikes. Then she went into her last Pokemon, Gigantamax Al Creamy. I hit one more Max Steel Spike with Corviknight before shrinking down to normal size again. So I went into Venusaur, set up a growth, took two moves like a tank, and finished off Al Creamy with a Petal Dance. After then getting our fifth Gym Brats from Opal, we travel back to Hammerlock. 
where we find out that Bede is actually attracted to older women because he goes on a date with Opal. I then traded away two more Pokemon which I could capture by going into the wild area because I just got two more gym badges. And for my efforts I got a really low leveled Choodle back and a level 50 Fletchinder. And even though we can't use Fletchinder now, Talonflame could be pretty useful late game. Before we can go on on our journey though, we have to fight Hop again. He now leads with a Trevenant all of a sudden, so we have a Magmar to deal with that with Lava Plume. For Snorlax I swapped in Toxicroak and after hitting some Revenges and Poison Jabs I eventually had to swap out again because otherwise Toxicroak was going to die and he decided to use a full restore on a Snorlax. So I brought in Antillion, almost got killed by a Snorlax sitting on me with Body Slam and then killed with two more Surfs. For his next Pokemon Rillaboom I swapped back into Magmar and killed with one more Lava Plume. His second to last Pokemon was Bolt Hunt, which got destroyed by a single Pyro Ball from Cinderace. And his last Pokemon, Heatmore, got killed by a high jump kick and a sucker punch from Cinderace as well. After crushing Hop's hopes and dreams, once again we capture another Pokemon on the next route and trade it away to get an Alolan Persian. I don't really know if this counts as dupe since we already got a Meowth, but I'm going to keep it anyway because it's a totally different typing as well. On the route just after that, I also got a Girder, which I traded away for a Scorbunny, which is in fact dupe's claw, so we can trade this away again. So that we get Butterfree, which is even worse, and it's level 59, so we can't use it. I then finally decided to take Choodle with me on my journey and evolved it into Dreadnought. On the snowy route, I captured a Pukumuku and traded it away for an Ice Q, which was only level 1, so I doubt we'll use this thing because Ice types just aren't that amazing. And since the next gym is full of rock types, I also decided to evolve my Nuzleaf into a Shiftry with the Leaf Stone. After doing the gym challenge, I decided to take on Jordy. I am very surprised that I remember this man's name because I didn't even know he existed anymore. His lead is a Barbarical, so I'm going to lead with something that's four times super effective against him, a Venusaur with Pedal Dance. After one-shotting it, he brings out Shuckle, which we two-shot with two more Pedal Dances, luckily not getting confused on my second turn. He then brings in his Stun Journer, which is really bad special defensively, so we bring out a Surfer the Inteleon and kill it. And with the last Pokemon being Colossal, I once again Dynamax my big amphibian friend and kill it with one more Max Geyser. Giving us the 6th Gym Badge and the opportunity to finally evolve my Snom into a Frost Moth by playing with it in the Pokemon camp because the next two gyms will be weak to Bug and Ice types. It took me quite a while, but eventually we finally got ourselves a Majestic Moth of Ice. We then meet up with Sonia and Hop and once again, if you meet up with Hop, he's going to want to battle you. So we have to show him who's boss again. I decided to lead with Frostmoth and kill his first Pokemon Dubwool with Blizzard. He then brings in Corviknight, so I know I don't want to take a Sealwing here. I swap in Cinderace, who can kill with a Pyro Ball. I don't have any Grand type moves on the team for Pinchurchin, so we once again kill with Pyro Ball. Snorlax gets killed by High Jump Kick and his last Pokemon and his starter, a Rillaboom, by another Pyro Ball. We then see that Team Yell is harassing a turtle, so after shooing them away, we get bloaties for our bike, so now we can bike on water. So we capture another Stuffle and trade that thing away for a Blip Bug. Before we enter Spike Moth, we once again have to fight our favorite goth girl, Marnie again. Since her leading Pokemon is going to be a light part, I decided to lead with Zoroark, go for the U-turn into Shiftry and then try to kill it Fake Out, but she used a potion so it doesn't kill. But luckily we still have Leaf Blade in the back so we can kill with that. She then has a Toxicroak, so I once again swap in Zoroark, get hit with a Poison Jab and then hit back with an extra sensory, killing it once again because it's four times super effective. For her Scraggy, I swapped in Venusaur, which killed with two Petal Dances, and her last Pokemon, Morpeko, couldn't even take one. And Morpeko is, in my opinion, probably the worst Pikachu clone of them all. As we then go and see a concert of Pierce, we get attacked by him instead. I guess he took the term stage diving a little bit too literally. But his team should be no problem for me to take down. I knew his leading Pokemon was going to be Scrafty, so I let off with Corviknight and killed with only two Drill Pegs. He swapped in Malamar, so I decided to bring in Frostmoth, but I didn't know that Frostmoth was this slow. And I got outsped, which brought me down into red HP, but my Citrus Berry activated, giving me some more health and killing Malamar with Bug Buzz. I knew that Obsagoon was going to outspeed me, so I brought in Toxicroak, since he has the 4 times super effective revenge on him. But as I hit a revenge on the Obsagoon, I then didn't kill, and it decided to go for a counter, and our Toxicroak is now dead. Can we get a moment of silence for the first death of our run? 
I then did what I should have done before, I went into Cinderace and killed it with high jump kick. This last Pokemon being Skunk Tank, we can once again kill this thing with a single Pyro Ball. This gives us our second to last gym badge, the seventh one. And besides that, I also shook hands with a Rockstar, which makes me not want to wash this hand ever again. So I then captured a gear and traded away for a mini Godzilla. And now there's only one more thing standing in front of me and the Champions Cup, and that's Rayhan, the final gym leader. This is sadly enough a double battle though, which is not too great for me, but I decided to go in with Inteleon and Venusaur against his Flygon and Gigalith. After hitting only one Surf and a Magical Leaf on the Gigalith, it already went down, and he then brought in Sandaconda, so I just went for a Surf with Inteleon taking down both of his Pokémon and a Synthesis with my Venusaur to get some HP back. Then brought in his final Pokémon, Duraludon. G-Max Duraludon, basically the skyscraper of this game. I wonder if there's actually people living inside it. Anyway, I decided to charm the Duraludon with my Mimikyu and then Dynamax my Corviknight and because I learned it Revenge, I can now use Max Knuckle. The turn after I decided to burn the Duraludon and then go for another Max Knuckle. And because its attack is now so crippled, we can take it out the turn after that with one more Shadow Claw and Max Knuckle combo since he turned back into its tiny, tiny form. Just like that, we've already defeated Rayhan, gotten our 8th Gym Badge. So before we move on to the final part of the game, we capture one more Roly Coley in the wild area and trade it away for a level 98 shiny Scorbunny, which is definitely not hacked in. So we're going to just trade this away again because it's dupes claws. And so this time we got ourselves a Lucario named Rex at level 56. So we're going to be able to use him against Leon, but that's it. So I'm definitely not disappointed with a Lucario. Now it's time for the final part of the game, the victory road part where I can capture one more Mr. Mime, and before trading it away, my Fletchinder evolved into a Talonflame. We then trade away our Mr. Mime and get a Onyx at level 10, which I will never use, and we also evolve Blibbug into Dottler, and after that into Orbeetle, and then Larvitar into Pupitar as well. Eventually, we do find ourselves in Winton, where we can now start the final event of the game, the Champions Cup basically the Elite Four. The first challenger we have to face is Marnie. She once again leads with her cat, so we kill it with high jump kick from Cinderace, then we swap in Corviknight, kill the second Pokemon Scrafty with Drill Picks. As she then brings in Morpeko, I decide to go into Pupitar, but I know Morpeko has Bullet Seed. So after going into Pupitar and then immediately switch into Cinderace because I don't want to take Bullet Seed to the face, and I proceed to kick the little rat with my bunny. A ball of flames destroys her Toxicroak. And her last Pokemon is Grimmsnarl, so I decided to just swap out my Pokemon to stall out her Gigantamax. And since a lot of Pokemon on my team could just take a hit quite easily, I can then eventually swap in a Cinderace again and go for the Max Flare to kill Grimmsnarl. The next challenger is going to be none other than Hop. He arguably brings the worst team he's ever had with him. And since he once again leads with his very bulky and thick sheep, we kill it with high jump kick. The Snorlax survived a high jump kick, so he used a full restore, and then I went for Pyro Ball. It didn't do as much damage, so I swapped in Talonflame with one more Acrobatics and a Flame Charge. He then goes into Prenchurchin, so I swap in my only counter for this, Pupitara, and go for the Earthquakes to kill again. He then has Big Steel Metal Bird, so I go into Superior Fire Bird, Dynamax, kill with Max Flare. He goes into his Green Gorilla, we go for another Max Flare, and win the battle against Hulk. After the battle is over, we also get another evolution, Pupitar evolves into Tyranitar. Since we're so famous now because we beat up two of the worst trainers in this entire region, we get interviewed by the press, but luckily Bodyguard Hop fends them away. We then get challenged to a game of hide and seek by Chairman Rose. We then clean out the phone booth and get permission to enter his secret hideout. After seeing a concert from Pierce again, we then get greeted at the top of the tower by a very angry woman. She leads with a Frostlass, so by starting with Magmar we can easily melt that thing into a pool of water. Ghostly water, that is. As she then goes into Pretty Snake, we go into Venusaur and kill with Petal Dance. She then brings in Salazzle, so I decide to go into Dreadnought and kill with Liquidation. For Tarina, I swapped a Magmar and kill with Flamethrower again. She then brings in Big Pile of Trash, so I bring in Tiny Cute Ghost Thing. I also managed to tank two more hits because I used some charms on it. 
So it then turns into a small bag of trash again. I swap in Big Turtle, go for Max Geyser twice and take out Very Mad Woman. Chairman Rose then is definitely not sus, so we just leave him alone. And the next day we just go on with the tournament like nothing happened. Before jumping into the tournament, I evolved my Golbat into a Crobat because he could be pretty useful against the next few challengers. You then see that Beat is definitely going through puberty here because he has changed his entire appearance and personality. And he now doesn't only use Psychic types, he also uses Fairy types. This does mean that he starts with Mawile, which we can once again one-shot with my Magmar's Flamethrower. He then brings in Gardevoir, so I go into my Corviknight, set up two Home Claws, and decide to kill it with a Max Steel Spike. I then also kill his last two Pokémon, a Galarian Rapidash with Max Steel Spike, and his very big Hatterene with a Max Steel Spike too. This makes Bead go away finally, so we can actually start the tournament. And the first real challenger we have to face is Nessa, with her water types. She starts with Emergency Exit, and goes into Long Fish. And for some reason I decide to stay with Crobat and go for Brave Bird, and after taking a hit from the Barrascuda, we're only left with 7 HP. So the turn after I bring in Dreadnought and try to go for a Rock Tomb, but I miss, and I don't want to take any more damage, so I swap in Venusaur instead. I get hit with a Drill Run and an Ice Fang, but my Citrus Berry activates, giving me some more health, and then finally killing Barrascuda with Energy Ball. And just for Pelipper, I took Scorch with me because it has Thunder Fang, and it's the only electric type move I have on my entire team. So after tanking a Water Pulse, I take out the big Seabird with Thunder Fang. But the Pelipper was able to set up a Tailwind, and I totally forgot that it did this. So she brought in Galissapod again, and I thought that I was just going to outspeed here because Galissapod is really slow, but because of the Tailwind, it outsped and killed my Scorch. So I decided to go into Venusaur then to stall it out with Synthesis until the Tailwind pettered out. I went for Energy Ball and finally killed the Big Bug. She now has two more Pokemon left, the Big Turtle and the Sea King, but I can just make my Toad go big and go for the G-Max Overgrowth on both Pokemon to win myself my first real challenger battle. The next challenger we face is B with her Fighting types, and luckily we have more than enough Psychic and Flying types in our arsenal. So as she leads with Hawlucha, I decide to counter with Talonflame. I just killed it with a single Acrobatics, as she then brought in Phalanx. I thought that I was going to kill here with a single Acrobatics, but it survived a little bit of HP and hit back with a Rock Tomb, doing about half of my health. I then finished it off with Flame Charge to get my speed back, and as she brought out Graplocked, I went into Mimikyu because this thing can't physically touch me. I set up one Sword Dance and kill with Play Rough. Surfetched also went down to Play Rough, and the final Pokémon, Machamp, got destroyed by a single G-Max Starfall. This did bring Mimikyu up to level 56, which means that we're not going to be able to use him against Rayhan, but luckily we still have a box full of Pokémon that we can use. That still means that we have to take on the Dragon-type guy now that doesn't even use Dragon-types for his entire team, but instead has a Weather team right now, so I hope you brought a coat, a swimming pants, and some Go Goggles. Anyway, the big boy himself starts off with a little fire turtle, so my Godzilla can just kill that with a single Stone Edge. He then brings in Flygon, so I bring in my Crobat and decide to go for the Toxic while he sets up a Sandstorm, and I also got hit with a Dragon Claw pretty hard. So I went into Dreadnought to stall some turns with Protect, and then went back into Crobat to kill with Brave Bird because I was expecting an Earthquake. He then brings in Gudra, and I thought that this Gudra was just going to change the weather like the last two Pokémon, so I stayed in with Crobat and tried to go for the Toxic. I got the Toxic off, but it went for Thunder, and it landed it, so my Crobat is now dead. No worries though, we still have Frostmoth on the team, and one more Blizzard combined with the Toxic damage takes down Gudra. He then has another big turtle, so I bring in Tyranitar again, go for the Dynamax, and kill with a single Max Quake. He then goes into Duraludon, I hit one more Max Quake with Tyranitar, and because it went for a Max Knuckle, I had to switch out because I didn't want Tyranitar to die, so I went into Magmar, who was able to tank some hits, I then went into Dreadnought, who was once again able to tank another hit, and I then once again brought in Magmar, he tanked an Iron Head with 30 HP remaining, and finally killed Duraludon with Flamethrower. I honestly expected for Magmar to go down here, because I still had more than enough fire types in the computer, but him surviving is just a nice bonus for me. After winning our final battle, it's now time to take on Leon. 
if there wasn't a big Pokemon that was attacking everything. So after Leon goes off and fights the thing on his own, we go to the slumbered well to find some doggos, but I found a Grubbin instead. So I traded that away and got a useless teddy bear, but I also found a rusted sword and shield, which we take with us to the top of the big tower. But before we can go to the top, we first have to go to the bottom to kill Chairman Rose. Which was actually quite easy, we just did flamethrower, 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 he then brought out big Koparaja elephant, and I put some stats into the stat calculator and I found out that Magmar could take a Max Quake if I was Dynamax, so I Dynamaxed, went for some Max Flares and killed the big Bulldozer elephant. We can then finally take the elevator up to the highest point of the city, where we can see Leon capture a legendary, the Pokeball. Yeah, of course, that's not going to work. Because this is a big Pokemon, you need a big ball. So after we defeat it with the two big doggos, we throw big ball and we actually can't trade away Eternatus. So not an extra encounter for us, sadly enough. Since we did just save the entire Gala region though, we finally get our fight with Leon. I knew that he was going to be leading with Aegislash, so that's why I brought Magmar with me. I set up a Sunny Day to boost my fire type attacks, while he just set up a King Shield and then proceeded to kill him with Flamethrower. Then goes into Haxorus, I know this thing is going to go for Earthquake, so I swap in Corvin Knight. And two more Drill Picks later and we can already kill the Haxorus, luckily enough because one of them was a critical hit. For Dragapult, I decided to go into Magmar to go for a Confuse Ray and then do some Chim Damage and Flamethrower before swapping in Mimikyu. I got hit with one Flamethrower, but then managed to hit a Phantom Force in order to kill the big Dragapult. He then has Mr. Rhyme, which is a Psychic Ice type, so I go for another Phantom Force. Sadly enough, not killing, so I got hit with a Teeter Dance. So as he uses a full restore, I go for another Phantom Force. I managed to hit, and it once again didn't kill. So I swapped out Mimikyu for Lucario because he just used another full restore and I then finally kill with Meteor Mash. He then has Inteleon who was able to hit one snipe shot on my Lucario but I managed to kill with an extreme speed and a close combat. He then goes into his ace Pokemon that no one has ever heard about, Charizard or something like that. So I bring in Godzilla, take his G-Max Wildfire like a champ, Dynamax myself and then kill with a Max Rockfall. Just like that, we have defeated Leon and Pokemon Sword and Shield with a hardcore Wonderlock, I'm pretty sure this is called. And to be honest, it was a lot of fun playing through Galar. It was like over a year ago since I first played through this game and also last played through this game. And it was really refreshing to have a challenge where I didn't know what I was going to get. So please let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more Sword and Shield videos. But in a couple of months, the new Pokemon games will release anyway, so I'll probably make some videos on those too. Anyway, I do want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. It's always appreciated. And if you want to do so yourself, the links are in the description. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share. Share this video with your friends, I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.